I'm back, and we are covering the rest of the matchups this week. We're also getting into our DraftKings lineups and discussing the game and some of the things that happened last night on today's episode. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers back with you, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, a Friday episode of the podcast. Matchups, news, shame. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> it's really it's fun. nice when you can forget. Yep. Fun being on that side of things. Uh, yes, I will be shamed today. And I deserve it. Because you two, you took all the chalk and you won. So we were good. Well, you didn't have the foresight to play wide receiver two on the week, Mac Hollins. Of, you, I mean, superstar of the Las Vegas Raiders. It's a good point, Mike. The uh, fantasy well, face off the wheel of shame later on during today's episode of the show. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, so I encourage you to do so. We're on Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube. You want to watch the show? YouTube.com slash the Fantasy Footballers. You can subscribe, click the bell, and you'll be notified when Mike goes live every Sunday morning for Sunday Live, where he is, uh, you know, tilting with you, giving last minute yeah. advice. And honestly, he's been making these sneaky roster pickups oh, before. Don't put that pressure on me. You know, and he never misses. That's the thing about Mike. He never gets those calls wrong. He so. said earlier this morning that he has a really special one for this week. Okay. I can't wait to hear yeah, who I'll, it is. I guess I do. <laughs> I'll be tuning in for sure. Uh, it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday during the season, we give away $100 to FantasyChamps.com where you can pick up a trophy, a ring, whatever the case may be. And today's winner over on Patreon, Laminar Throw. Laminar Throw is the username over there. Congratulations. You win a $100 gift card. Thank you for supporting the show. Yeah, go get a, go get a ring or, you know, or a trophy or the, trophy or or the belt. Yeah. But speaking, Swag out is yeah, what yeah. we're saying. Uh, and this, I'll just, it's just a short little thing, but speaking of foot clan, they have asked for something for many years <laughs> oh, yeah. and there might be a special announcement on Monday. That's all I'll say. Yeah. The tease for the tease. Just That's don't. Right. Yeah. The tease for the tease. Yeah. Don't miss Monday. Well, That's this what, is how you do. I mean, like, absolutely. like the big movies, you know, they have the teaser. Right. And then the trailer. Yep. So the so, trailer is coming Monday. That's right. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the Thursday night football game. Bengals 27, Miami Dolphins 15. Uh, this was there, – there's two storylines here um, to talk about. The first one is what happened with Tua Tungavailoa, yeah. the very, very scary injury, concussion, um, and then post-concussion symptoms on the field. It is stealing the headlines, right? It is, this is dominating the news right now with regards to – you know, was Tua actually injured last week when the team claimed it was a back injury where he cleared concussion protocol in like eight real minutes, not eight game minutes, and then was back out on the field? Um, you know, my my take on this is, first of all, it's been – I'm thankful that the news has been very positive relative to what Tua. What it looked like. Yeah. yeah, what it looked like. There, there, the possibility of there being a neck injury, the possibility of it being – uh, something that he had to stay in the hospital. He's been discharged. He flew back with the team. It's uh, I, I I say this with respect. It's just a concussion. It's not a concussion and broken bones or something of that nature. Um. So you know, to me, this whole debate comes down to 
the NFL hires medical professionals. The teams hire medical professionals. They're supposed to follow a protocol. Um, us at home, we don't know. You know, the, the whole story about concussions is sometimes the worst hit in the world is not a concussion, and the lightest hit that you've ever seen is the most severe concussion. We're not trained in being able to identify that. So to me, that lays the responsibility at the feet of the medical professionals hired by the NFL. Uh, it's not really... I, I can't make a judgment call on what they did or didn't do behind the scenes. If the medical team didn't do what they're supposed to do, they should be fired. I mean, they should, yeah, they should, should be, consequences. be yeah. responsible. It's just, it's scary when you see what the, you know, the, the and they showed it a lot, yeah, uh, way too much, you know, and it was, it was a scary sight. And whenever you worry about the health of a human being, you, you, you know, we're going to get up in arms. We're going to see what can we, what could we have done better? And, and hopefully if there were problems, done they get rectified um and and moving forward i i agree with you andy the main thing is it, it's good that he has progressed quickly and and did not have uh, the he amount would. of time he was down as well not not I just know. the pictures but the amount of time he was on the field when the stretcher was coming out there were you know really big worries that that now those worries have at least been alleviated yeah so we'll we'll find out a lot more the mri is still to come uh They'll, they'll be very thorough about this injury on the field. Players had to shake this off, which was almost impossible to do. But uh, the Bengals win a second consecutive game at home. Joe Burrow, a nice fantasy day, 287 and two, didn't throw a pick in this one. Um, Joe Mixon got a ton of work, should have had a much bigger fantasy day, had multiple goal line opportunities on multiple drives that he didn't get in. Yeah. I say he had a he had a lot of carries inside 20, the five. Twenty four carries in the to game. To have too. only one rushing touchdown. I mean it twenty four carries turning into sixty one yards. Is, I mean fantasy it worked out, but that's that's gross. Well, if you get stuffed on the goal line five times, sure. that's gonna change your yards per carry. But it it wasn't just the goal line. I mean they he looked like his longest run of the night was seven yards and not that I need I don't need him ripping off 20 yard carries every other time he touches the ball but it just it continued a now a, a four-week trend of Cincinnati they can't run they want to run but they cannot do it yeah, very well their offensive line has not just been bad in the passing game for Joe Burrow that's grabbed the headlines but their offensive line has just been bad all, all the way around that being said the opportunities that were given to Joe Mixon it doesn't matter what he does with them Zach Taylor's like, yeah, again, yeah, again. Samaje so only had two two opportunities, right. one target, one carry. So Tw to twenty eight <clears throat> opportunities for Joe Mixon. The wide receiver room for Cincinnati: T. Higgins, Whee! seven for one twenty four and a touchdown on nine targets. Jamar Chase four for eighty one. One of those four from Tyler Boyd, and uh, Jamar Chase after week one, where I think he had ten receptions and a touchdown. It's been a slower few weeks. Well, he did score last week. It's in week one. T. Higgins was knocked out of that game early on, and then Jamar Chase went on to be an absolute target machine. Jamar Chase is fantastic. T. Higgins is equally as fantastic, and Higgins was doing this while pretty hobbled and banged up for a lot of the game. On the other side, Teddy Bridgewater had to take over for Tua. Went fourteen for twenty-three, one ninety-three, and one. It. It was a pretty good performance from him. Mostert and Chase mm, yeah. Edmonds. We need to talk about this yeah. breakdown. Uh, Raheem Mostert had 72% of the snaps. That that's is elite. Yeah, that that's above what a real RB1 versus, you know, change of pace back normally has. So, you know, Chase Edmonds dropped the touchdown pass in the first quarter, but the usage and workload for Chase Edmonds has diminished. The trust for Mostert... He was 100% of the two-minute drills. He was the majority of the goal line. He was the majority of all snaps. You didn't really see Chase take the field in the fourth quarter that I remember. I mean, even even downs in, down in distances where I thought, okay, Mostert just broke off a 24-yard run. Now we're going to see a play with Chase Edmonds. So I don't, you know, they, they had a hobbled Jalen Waddle. You, you would have thought Chase Edmonds would be more integral. Yeah. Um, like, I'm sounding the alarm on Chase Edmonds. Now he scored. 
He scored in this game again. He scored last week. Back-to-back weeks. And 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 like you said, he should have had two touchdowns because they obviously have some goal line packages dedicated to Chase Edmonds, but you can't rely on that. You can't start him. And people will be like, oh, should, should we cut him? No, of course not. You're picking up Samaje Pirine off the waivers just in case. You're not cutting uh, Chase Evans. It's more about you need to be picking up Raheem Mostert because if this utilization continues, he'll be good for fantasy. He had opportunities to score touchdowns, just they, you know they didn't come. Um, I'm curious as the weeks go on, will this be the norm or or not? Uh, you know, th this was a short week of recovery. Uh, for the Dolphins, and obviously in the beginning of the year, you had Chase dealing with some injuries, so we'll we'll just have to stay tuned. But Raheem Mostert's a must pick up. We'll talk about that on waivers tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow Saturday. Cool. I Jason will, be, will have. Are you in Monday I'm doing mode? A, I, yeah, I am. I am in Monday mode. That was I, like post game Monday. Yeah. Well, you missed yesterday's show, so your week's probably all disoriented. Yeah, I feel like I'm back for a new week, so I will be here tomorrow, Foot Clan. Just, but, okay. Just letting you know, 42% in week one for Mostert to 55% to 56% to 72%. And uh, the history These with trends continue. Mike McDaniel makes it very interesting. He was good. He was 4.6 a carry, had a 25-yard run. Um, yes, we'll talk about it on Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> uh, Tyreek Hill, 10 for 160, 14 targets. He's good. And then Jalen Waddle just two for thirty nine came off the field with it seemed hobbled multiple times he came off the field uh, early and late in that game he is not a hundred percent right now yeah, it's he, also a bigger worry for me with him and Teddy Bridgewater if that's how the future is going to be agreed I say he was questionable coming into the game and, that's right and it was you know the announcement everyone was active but it's with uh with with the way the injury designations are now it's it's really hard to know of if a guy's questionable. Does he is he just have a scrape or does he actually have something going on? And unfortunately, Waddle has an injury that he's really dealing with. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA Insurance. Speaking of those injury designations, oh. Christian McCaffrey. Stay strong, Christian. He's at practice on Friday morning. He is listed as questionable for week four. It was looking very negative Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, um, I, I still don't think it's a guarantee uh, that he plays this week. Uh, we'll have to see how limited or full he is at practice. Yeah, if he's a full participant, um, then great. If he's limited and doing work on the sideline on a Friday, the, you know, the, there there were concerns about this being, you know, uh, worse than – the previous yes. time that it sidelined him. The problem here, because uh, obviously when you have a questionable running back, you're looking at the pivot options on that team who could be thrown in there. Unfortunately, there's two guys that are going to get the work. It's going to be yeah. Deontay Foreman and it's going to be uh, Chuba, Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard. And if it's if it's my choice between the two, I lean Foreman. I don't know where you guys lean. I lean Foreman as well. I think this is the year of defeating Achilles. And so... Oh, yeah. Foreman is just the next man up. Eileen J.D. McKissick. And that's the Greek god Achilles, you're saying. We're going yeah, right, to finally exactly. get over the Put hump and defeat him. right in that heel. Just give me a kiss. Thank you. Wait, did, did did his name get mentioned? Yes. Mike brought it up. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking over here. I'm giving really good analysis. <laughs> we're talking about Greek gods, but whatever. <laughs> I said, you were giving who do you prefer between those two guys, and I said, I prefer J.D. McKissick off of the waiver wire. The, uh, the device. It's working. Dalvin Cook. Shh. Listed as a full participant in Thursday's practice. Uh, now, is it legal for him to have like a robotic uh, assistant on the field? If it's non-sentient. His, oh, okay. his yeah. stiff arm is <laughs> going to be elite. It's hydraulic. <laughs> they will not be able to tackle it. But it gets locked at the, the, at the elbow, so it just he's stuck running with it out. Um, no, this is good news. Dalvin Cook should be playing. Uh, Cordero Patterson. Now they're in they're in London for that game, right? That's the Minnesota that is correct Saints game. So the matchup's not great, but Dalvin's Dalvin. So Cordero Patterson. He he practiced on Friday. We got word yesterday that he hadn't practiced on Thursday, right? So yep. Um, uh, you know maybe uh, they had talked about some maintenance days with Cordero. Maybe that's what it was with the age and and the workload. He deserves it after what he's yes, done he to does. start the year. Uh, Adrian Brown had missed two days of practice. There were personal reasons. He is back on Friday. So no concern there. 
And then we're going to give you some Saints and Lions news here because there's a lot between the both teams. Jameis Winston didn't practice for a third day in a row. Nick Underhill, who's a very good reporter in New Orleans, would be surprising if he plays. So Andy Dalton looks like he's going to get the start, and he will not have Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas has been ruled out for this week. Ho-hum, here we are again with Michael Thomas. It's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be Andy Dalton throwing to Chris Olave and probably Jarvis Landry and company, and hopefully using Alvin Kamara, who is listed as questionable as well, but practiced. For like for Chris Olave, you, like the the move from Jameis to Andy Dalton, uh, I mean it could you, be worse. It could, yeah, it certainly could be worse. You like Jameis because Jameis chucks it down the field. However, you know we at least a couple games. Uh, was it last year we had Andy Dalton with on the Bears with uh, with with Darnell Mooney and, yep. and and Mooney had some good performances. I like last I like year hearing that, Mike. Dalton. So thank you. Yeah, yeah that's, we're here. We're here for everyone. Don't like. This is not panic bench Chris Olave because Andy Dalton's the quarterback. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Andy Dalton has shown a willingness to throw interceptions on par with Jameis Winston in his career. Oh, of course. Uh, all right, we have the Detroit Lions, Amon Ross St. Brown, superstar wide receiver, yeah. declared out for this game. Um, we got some concerning news about DJ Chark because we had talked about it yesterday on the show that he could be a good pivot. And then he, he missed practice, but Dan Campbell at least said Friday that he's jogging around but nursing the same ankle, ankle injury, but should be good. It makes it a scarier situation. Yeah, I wouldn't he's not there. He's not the pivot option. If he is active and he's still nursing the ankle injury from last year, I'm not wanting to play DJ Chark in my lineups. Josh Reynolds is who I think would really take a step up. I mean, he, he had a, a lot of work last week, and with – Swift expected to miss. I mean, that's he is not ruled out yet, but I would be surprised if he plays as a pass catching running back. No Amon Ra, a hobble DJ Chark. Josh Reynolds is a is a pretty good pivot. Yeah, and Jamal's going to catch some passes too if they yes, are limited. Will. And TJ Hawkinson. Dan Campbell did say Swift is unlikely to play. Don't count on him. David and Joku, after being named my start of the week, decided to take the day off to celebrate. Didn't practice yesterday. Look when you when you get an honor. Like an Andy Thank Holloway you. start of the week. That's right. You got to at least have a cupcake. Well, hey, Gabe Davis took the day off yeah. after I named him my start of the week. It's a great honor, and they celebrate this. They went out together, yeah. and they celebrated. Yeah. But they are both back at practice on Friday. Actually, well, they Njoku get to is Gabe Davis. Um, it's looking better, but pay attention because yeah. that, that, that one's screaming a surprise sit to me. Gabe Davis already came back last week. We weren't sure if he was going to. Uh, that was a Monday night game, right? Was that a Monday night game? No, the, the Bills? Was, the Bills no, were not. No, they were on Sunday. Okay. The Monday was the Cowboy-Giant game. Yeah, so we were surprised that Gabe didn't take that game off, or, or at least we were expecting that to be a possibility. We, we were also surprised at how much he was on the field. He might just need another week. Yeah. So uh, any other news you guys have, Kyle? Josh wants you to know that Taysom Hill is off the injury report. <laughs> Okay. Well, Pop, if Papa Josh with the taste. Of, so, I mean, he will be the backup quarterback in this game. So, if you – and and, and no Michael Thomas. So, if you want to, like, create a Taysom Hill-style narrative, you know, do they bring him in to throw the ball a couple times? Because that could be high upset. It's far more likely this week than when Jameis is the starter. All right, that was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Eight games to cover before we head into the fantasy faceoff. If you don't hear the game you're interested in today, it was on yesterday's show. Uh, New York, the Jets, one and two, taking on the one and two Pittsburgh Steelers. The DraftKings... Sportsbook line is Pittsburgh minus three. Yeah, the over under is a. Bleh. That's an official number. That right. it, that there sounds, are several of those this this week. Yeah, forty one and a half. So, Joe Flacco is going to be handing the baton to Zach Wilson. Mitchell Trubisky should hand it to <laughs> uh, to Kenny Pickett. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, this has not been. 
you know, the Mitchell Trubisky experience has not been good, period. He's had a small a drive here, a drive there, whatever. You know, all NFL quarterbacks have a drive here and a drive there. But this offense is frustrated. Deontay Johnson is being limited despite the 11 targets a game. Claypool, Pickens, you know, I'm I'm all about Pickens, George up off the waiver wire Hey-o! and maybe uh, seeing if his <laughs> – Seeing if his utilization begins to rise because he's just really talented. He's really talented, but if his utilization would need to completely dominate everyone else. I mean, right now, a really talented Deontay Johnson has great utilization and is just an okay fantasy play unless you're in a full PPR league where you're just relying on a, on a good baseline. I mean, right now, Mitch Trubisky's throwing 1.9% touchdown rate, which is uh, trash. And that's trash for... Trubisky, I mean, Trubisky's, he he was 2.1% his rookie year, and then he lived in the the fives. Yeah, he uh, he did target picking seven times last week, which was up from the two weeks prior. Uh, Alec Pierce or, or George Pickens is a, is, is a rookie flyer. I would take Alec Pierce. Uh, yeah, currently it would be Pierce. Uh, the Muth only got Luth on a couple of plays last week. Very late. Very late. Uh, it, it was enough yardage to salvage the day, sort of. But um, how do you feel about the Muth in this matchup against the currently 13th ranked against the tight end New York Jets? I mean, 21% per- percent target share. I know it, it came late. It was it was scary last week that he was going to be a goose. But in in the landscape, you could certainly do worse. Who's, Not, who's better, him or Tyler Conklin on the other side of the field? Oh, Man. Conklin. Yeah, that will, Conklin. Is Conklin really the tight end four? Yes, he is. He is. So, the, but here's the issue with Tyler Conklin. Uh, Too many targets? It, no, it's, uh, I mean, the, the targets, it's been very enjoyable over these first few weeks. But the New York Jets have been in the, the just the most negative of negative game scripts. Will, are... We we were just talking about the struggles of Mitch Trubisky. Can he take this offense and pour that type of points onto the New York Jets that forces a sixty plus passing night from Zach Wilson? Because that's where that's where Tyler Conklin is is making it happen. It's not because he's dominating the targets. It's he's getting targets because their pie is so bountiful right now. Jacoby Percet put up 31 points on him. I, I mean, I, I realize that they had the great run game and that they're probably a, a, just a better offense as a whole because of their offensive line and running game. Uh, but you ever seen Zach Wilson throw a pick six before? <laughs> or, or a couple of them? I mean, the Pittsburgh defense at home could put up enough points to put him in that game script. But yeah, I mean, Conklin, Fryermuth, it's a coin flip for me. Maybe you go with the, the tight end at home in Fryermuth and hope that you get that touchdown, whereas Conklin's probably not going to catch a touchdown. Yeah, and we, and we just really have a lot of question marks with all of the Jets' side of the ball because of Zach Wilson taking over. We don't know if, you know, they, they came out and said they want to run the ball more. Um, you know, and that's all well and good. Again, you have to be in a position where you can continue to run the ball, which they have not found themselves in. Um, I did not realize Brees Hall was your start of the week, Mike. That's, that is correct. That is that scares me, but it excites me. I mean, it yes, it. I I explained it as my starts of the week were very uh, iron underpants. Of you got to have the courage. I just, I was the hopeful thing for Brees Hall is last week, the the tide started to turn in in opportunities over to Brees Hall. He. He still can by he still can take over this backfield like that's in the range of outcomes for him, and the Steelers you can run on them like so I I do think that Brees Hall is going to have some success. Six attempts in week one, seven in week two, eight in week three. Oh man, so easy. Week sixteen, he'll have twenty attempts. I did the math. Okay, so be ready for that. But no, uh, it, it has been. Um, he had a snap count dip down in week two, went to the highest of the year last week, so there is an opportunity there for Brees. He's tied for the second most running back targets in the NFL. So I That's think that was going down. Yeah, let me say Zach Wilson's going to be this is going to be the experiment, right? We're going to see what yes. happens here with Zach Wilson. Um you know, fortunately for Wilson, there's no TJ Watt running after him in this game. Garrett Wilson, I think you can flex him. Sure. I think you expect him to get the ball enough, uh, but beyond that, I wouldn't be relying on any other jet. Agree. And uh historically Wilson has been bad on the road. You three he, touchdowns in seven games. You could have cut off the on the road. One hundred fifty-two passing yards. That's a good point, Mike. Yeah, 
you know, it, I'll say this. At the end of the year, Zach Wilson was throwing to Braxton Berrios, I think, maybe not Keelan Cole, but was it Keelan Cole? Nobody's. Nobody's. <laughs> I mean, having Elijah Moore back out on the field, Garrett Wilson, right. a, a healthy Corey Davis, Tyler Conklin, now you get to see it, right? We 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 want to give yes. them the opportunity with players. Let's go, Zach. To see it. Get it done. Um, I'm not going with the almost upset there. <laughs> Uh, the no. Buffalo Bills at two and one taking on the Baltimore Ravens who are two and one. Here we go. Mike clapped his hands. Here we go. The over under is fifty one from DraftKings. The line is Buffalo minus three. So Josh Allen, excellent, has been incredible this season. Seventy three dropbacks last week. So uh, he's he's good at throwing the ball and he loves doing it. Mm -hmm. He is excellent. He threw it 11 times to Devin Singletary. So is Devin Singletary oh my gosh. equally as nervous this week as he was last week? I mean, uh, of a start? Uh, no, I, th I think you should have a little bit more confidence this week because of what you saw last week. Now, last week, they played uh, so there were 90 snaps. I mean, it was like getting a game and a half out of everybody there. So you 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 got to assume it's not going to be that level of the amount of plays in this game. That being said, the uh, percentage uh, of all of his work is his uh, snap percentage, his percent of, of running back rush attempts, certainly the routes run. I actually like Devin Singletary going forward to be more involved. The, the, the Zach Moss experiment seems like they keep trying it and then go, oh, yeah, this doesn't work, and then they go back to Devin Singletary. Right. I'm fine playing Devin Singletary this week. I, I really am. What about him or Brees Hall in the previous matchup against Pittsburgh? Mm. <laughs> I'd be playing uh, uh, Singletary. Yeah, I mean, the, the volume, I think, is more assured because we don't know what Zach Wilson's world is going to look like. Like, I could see, I, I made this argument, I, I don't remember if it was on the air or just in the studio, but I, I do worry with Zach Wilson coming in off of an injury, do they want to have the better pass protector in there? Um, yeah, you mentioned that, you know, Michael Carter, right? And so I just, I've got a lot of question marks there. I would go with Devin Singletary o over Brees Hall this week. Okay. Now, and, and one thing worth pointing out as we talk about this game, I am seeing because I, I mean, this game is just this is the one. This is the one game to rule them all this week. Two injured defenses, two of maybe the best two offenses in the league. We, you know, at least top five for each. Twenty mile an hour sustained wins. Gusts stronger, chance Wait, of rain. What? Yeah. What? So it's Come just on. Worth, worth knowing. But I don't the think over it's gonna... under has not moved. It stayed there at fifty one. Okay. Yeah. That's, Come on. That's I just don't, don't you ruin this mother nature. <laughs> don't you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nature. Uh so Alan Singletary oh, yeah. digs. Uh they're in your lineup. Gabe Davis is a real nervous start right now. Um if you had a pivot option of equal value, I would be not playing Gabe Davis because I don't want to see him limp off and then you get nothing. Agreed. McKenzie's in play, especially if Gabe Davis misses. And then, you know, Dawson Knox is just living in this half-injured purgatory of tight end optimism where we can't – I don't think we've said to start him this year. And uh, I, I wouldn't. So the Ravens' defense has been bad, though, against everybody. So at, at least in that regard, this is why Lamar Jackson has the most fantasy points through three weeks – of a quarterback in the history of fantasy football. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Because he has to. And he has to keep every game. He it's great. He has these great starts, and you're like, well, he's going to have to slow it down in the second half. But unlike Jalen Hurts, whose defense is outstanding, Baltimore's just like, man, we might give this lead up. It, and so it's perfect. It is a perfect storm right now. Rashad Bateman's in play. What do you do with J.K. Dobbins, who... Looks like he is on the way back. He practiced in full. He you give him another week because the Buff seven attempts last week. Sorry, Buffalo secondary is injured. I think you can pass on them, but their their front is great. They are tough to run on. This isn't the week where you just assume first of all that they're going to give him the workload to matter for fantasy, and that he's going to beat the Buffalo Bills. So this is another week to wait. You hope that the percentages go up even if the fantasy output isn't great. The the, the snaps were low, 43%, but the to me, a 7% target share and uh the 54% of the running back attempts, like that's a that's a positive sign for going forward, but I agree that if you have anybody that you can put in over JK Dobbins, I get it's tough, but like 
Would you guys play all of them? Whatever you say, <laughs> yeah, I'm okay, playing right, over J.K. Right, Dobbins. Yeah, J.D. McKissick. Um, ETN, I would... Michael Carter, Cam Akers, all of them. Yep. Tony Pollard? Sure. Yep. Okay. Yeah, J.K. JK Dobbins needs to – I mean, the matchup is – Jason said it. The matchup's yep. terrible. It's not like, you know, if he gets 10 touches, it's going to be bad. Los Angeles, 1-2, and two, the Chargers, taking on the 0-2-1 Houston Texans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, the Chargers minus 5 on the road. The over-under is 45. That gives the Chargers 25 points. Uh, this is, The Chargers' story this season has not been the one they wanted written. Injuries to their quarterback, Keenan Allen, Joey Bosa, um, inefficiency from Austin Eckler disappearing act from Mike Williams at times. So can the Houston Texans be the remedy to all of these ills? Can we, can we see the resurgent Austin Eckler? Can we see Mike Man. Williams heavily targeted yet again? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wow. Uh, that was a yeah with a question mark at the end. Of it that. was, it was a yeah with a question mark at the end. The, you know, you would, you would, uh, expect a touchdown lead from the team's, before the season started, but the Chargers with the injuries and on the offensive line and Herbert, they just have a lot of question marks. I mean, you're going to play them, right? You're not sitting Mike Williams in this matchup without Keenan Allen, and you're not sitting Austin Eckler, who still can volume his way and target his way to an inefficient, good fantasy day. And this is a great matchup for running backs against the Texas. So it's really, it's it's a hold your breath situation while you put him in your lineup, and I hope you survive. The breath holding. I really <laughs> hope it because those are two of my players. Well, Austin Eckler and Mike Williams, I need you a big herb. Yeah, this is uh this is a good matchup for them. And they should be able to bounce back after the whooping they took at the hands of Jacksonville. I'll mention Josh Palmer. Josh Palmer, eight targets two weeks ago, nine last week. I mean, that's if Keenan's just actually out, right? And well, I was gonna bring it up, like Keenan Allen limped off the field we don't have another update on Keenan it's not looking great yeah the the update yesterday was I mean throughout the week he'd been doing individual work and then we got just kind of a ominous okay Keenan Allen just left with a trainer and that's yeah you know he's frustrated but so we need some more information but I would I'd agree it, it seems like we're trending in a in a bad situation for Keenan Allen the most one of the that most, puts Gerald Everett back in play too. Sure, one of the most common start sit questions on the fantasyfootballers dot com right now: Chris Olave versus the Minnesota Vikings or Big Mike Williams. Oh, I thought you were going to say Keenan. I was no, like, no, oh, no, that's no. easy. No, I think I would. Because, that would not be a common question because of Dalton. I think I'd go Mike Williams there. Okay, do you agree the, with that? The fifty-six percentage completion rate from Justin Herbert, who was very hurt last week, it doesn't. The the Here's the what cartilage. I want you to do, Mike. Put it, put that exact question up on Twitter and see what people say. I want to know what the sentiment is around Mike Williams right now and Chris Olave. Yeah, I'm, I'd be I'm, curious, I'm curious about that the as result. well. But I I would go Mike Williams. The uh, the rib cartilage injury for Justin Herbert will continue to get better every single week. I mean, obviously we saw the same injury keep Alvin Kamara out, and then he was back. And so it's I'm not saying Herbert is at 100 percent health now, but he will be healthier today than he was last week throwing. Where, where they kept him in in a 38-10 to 10 game and let him keep playing. So whatever rib injection they did was was spot on. Yeah, just watch those lungs. Uh, on the other side of the ball, the uh, Chargers have struggled against opposing running back, uh, fantasy running backs. Joey Bosa is not going to be a part of this defense. Damian Pierce is a solid start, in my opinion, uh, in the RB2 range. He's at 17, I think, in our consensus rankings. So you can put him out there. Brandon Cooks, 28% target share, but a really disappointing week last week. And again, you're looking at a situation that I think you have to keep playing Brandon Cooks because of how involved he is, but you're being limited by the quarterback right now. Yeah, it's it's wild what's going on with Brandon Cooks. I mean, on the year, tw like 28% of the targets, and yet that has turned into no higher than the wide receiver 27 in week one. Like 82 yards week one, that was the high and it's just been going down since then. It, 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 everything makes sense for Brandon Cooks to get out of this slump. Is he a buy low? Uh, I think so. I, it, as long as it's low and low enough. Like this isn't sure. this isn't a buy mid. This is a Traylon Burks. Would you trade Traylon Burks for yes. Brandon Cooks? Yes, I would. I and I like. We've talked about Burks. I like him, but I, the numbers and the history of Brandon Cooks 
say he will eventually get out of this funk. All right, quick break. Back with some more matchups. All right, the Arizona Cardinals at one and two take on the Carolina Panthers at one and two. The over under here is just forty three and a half on DraftKings. The sportsbook line, Carolina minus one and a half. So Arizona is they're on a road hot streak. They've won eight straight at, on the road as an underdog. That is the longest streak in the history of the NFL. I don't see any uh, huge reason why that can't continue here against Carolina. Carolina's just one and a half point home favorites. We do have a the line has moved. It's now Arizona minus one. It just moved in the last two hours. I, that's McCaffrey. That's what oh, that is. Uh oh. That's Christian McCaffrey down. That does. Sound. If it moved in the last two hours, that means somebody around that somebody around that practice field is not encouraged by what they saw. We saw this with Justin Herbert. Uh, and Herbert ended up playing. So that's not a guarantee McCaffrey doesn't play. But there's some nervousness in Vegas. Sure. Yeah. And then and then we did see Herbert play, but then get trashed by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars. Yeah. So the line move was smart there. That is, that is really um, interesting. There is also a chance for rain in this one. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't think that that's going to affect the line as far as who's going to win the game. But it's, it's something to be aware of for the passing game. What are the big storylines in this game for you? What big start set decisions stand out? I mean, the, the the big questions are on the Carolina side of it's been rough. I mean, Christian McCaffrey's getting the workload. He's been fine. But like the wide receivers, you had a big broken touchdown for Robbie Anderson in week one. DJ Moore, a very high draft pick, an incredibly talented wide receiver. On the year, we have, uh, what, seven total receptions for 88 yards uh, highlighted by a one for two performance last week against the new Orleans saints. He has caught 39% of his passes and having all of that knowledge. Do you remember that happened to him two years ago. He had a recall. super low catch percentage compared to his historical average. Oh, now, when, yeah. But and they, we were like, they started oh using him as like the nine route guy. Well, and, and he had another quarterback problem because that's all they've yeah. had for a while. But, who was right after Bridgewater? They had Taylor Heineke and Kyle Allen one year. The Panthers did? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it feels like a, a lifetime ago. I just thought, but, I thought DJ Moore had a really bad catch percentage on a ton of targets, and we were trying to excuse it away. Um, the usage he's had, also had Teddy yeah, Bridgewater. Fit, I mean, <laughs> it had totally flipped that year, cause that, and that's the year like his, his A dot was massive, and his yards per catch was was uh was very high yeah 56 percent, 57 percent. this is just screaming the trouble at the quarterback position yeah. over and over again so the question for dj moore is knowing all those things but then knowing that the arizona cardinals defense is not scary do you play dj Moore this no week? no you don't uh part of that and jason maybe you were going to bring it up but byron murphy has been a shutdown corner so far this year shut down Devontae adams shut down cooper cup Arizona will also get back uh, another corner this week, uh, Trayvon Mullen. I don't think you can play DJ Moore until he gives you a reason to play him. That's yeah, it. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's not within the realm of possibility. He has a great game, you know, 112 yards and a touchdown, but I can't possibly project him to a starting median score where I'm putting him in my lineup. If I've got Garrett Wilson or Romeo Dobbs or, or Juju or Brandon Ayuk, I'm putting all those players in my lineup over DJ Moore. Hollywood Brown had 17 targets last week. I've been asked if, you know, by multiple people, should you be trading high on, on the target totals for Hollywood Brown because of the eventual return of Hopkins? My opinion has been kind of, no, I don't think you do that. I think it's just, you know, he's not a sell. He's not a buy. He's just what he is. Yeah, Hollywood is not someone that people are – going hard after you know when you sell high on a player it would have been you know a Jalen Waddle who looks like he's just broken out and he's uh, the market know. says that that player is very valuable exactly I, I you know Marquise Brown's probably still undervalued in in fantasy um, but he, he's a strong play you can start him pretty much with confidence in this week because of the targets the Dorch Greg Dorch uh, continues to be 
getting enough involvement where I, you know, you could plug him in. Well, the, gotta, the question is Rondale Moore. We need an update on him because we think he'll be back. You do? You think he'll? He's been practicing. No, I know. I know he got back to practice. I just, I would still be surprised if he's in this game. But the, I, AJ sure. Green will miss it, so that could put Dorch in play, anyways. But the question for for the Dorch, who has been very competent, if Rondale Moore is active, I mean, there, Dorch has been the slot wide receiver, and that's where Rondale Moore is going to go. Do you still have confidence in the Dorch? You, if, if just if they say Rondale Moore is active, we don't know if he's how much he's going to play, but can you still play, Greg? Yeah, I, th I think I think the Dorch gets close to 10 targets this week with or without Rondell Moore. If Rondell is practicing again. If Rondell is active in this game, I I think that he will be limited. I don't think they're going to put him after this long of an injury where he came back and then got re-injured. I don't think they're just throwing him straight to the wolves. By the way, I'm anti-Dorch if Rondell's active. Yeah, that's that's more where I am, but it's by the way, go pick up Rondell Moore. Sure. He should he should be stashed. Over the over this weekend to see what's going if, on. If if anything from Greg Dorch's involvement, it, you exactly. should be able to see the path because Dorch is a jag. He's just a guy. He is. How dare you? Uh, look, I That's really not necessarily true. Yeah, it is. No, he it is, isn't. He's because, not a superstar. No, Andy Isabella is just a guy. No, Andy Isabella is bad. <laughs> <laughs> like Andy Isabella is uh is, is someone I, who can't crack a lineup. I what? can't argue. Look, you you've you've never you've had at least the Dorch has gone out and and done something with ten targets. Rondale has never done that. I'm saying a Josh Reynolds type of player who can volume his way to a fine fantasy production. That's the same with Greg Dorch. What Greg Dorch can't do is I don't think Greg Dorch can break tackles and have an 80-yard touchdown and, and do things athletically that Rondell Moore could do. If Rondell Moore gets the volume that Greg Dorch has been getting, and that's not a guarantee, but if he does, if he's running that role, then I think the talent of uh, Rondell is is fire. Could Ky could be very Kyle's high. calling um, Diet Jamison Crowder. Diet Jamison Crowder. That's pretty funny. Yeah. No, the I Dorch like that. or Rondale? Is that for the Dorch? That's the Dorch. That's the Dorch. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's rude. Um, it's calorie free. Uh, yeah, but the uh, cancer causing uh, <laughs> sugar, sugar substitutes. James Conner, he's averaging thirty rushing yards a game right now. Wow. I mean, if we wanted to like print out the what goes wrong for Conner uh, template, it would be he doesn't score and uh, he can't run the football, and that's yep. where we're at. Zach Ertz, ten targets, eleven targets. Uh, he will not goose you. That's one of his pledges he's made to the fantasy community. Yeah. Yep. And he's definitely playable. For sure. Uh, I would love to have Zach Ertz. Jason, what's wrong with Christian McCaffrey's body? Everything. Um, it doesn't It doesn't withstand uh, bell cow usage in the NFL. That's what's wrong with it. So McCaffrey, if he starts, he's starting, right, yep. for your team? Of course, for sure. yes. And if he's out, you're crying, weeping? In if the he, corner, if he is out, shower. I in the shower. Yeah, so no one could see the tears. The tears on my it's, face. It's With amazing. The they just Holding hear the, the whales. <laughs> when we talk about really bad teams with bad matchups, you can almost always find a start. But if Christian McCaffrey is out in this game, I don't think there is one. I don't think you can start DJ Moore or uh, or Robbie Anderson or anybody. Yeah, that could be a full. A full set. Oh, man. Uh, the New England Patriots at one and two take on the Green Bay Packers, who are two and one. Mac Jones is practicing. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Green Bay minus nine at home, though. And the over-under is 40 points. That gives uh, that gives the Patriots just, just under 16. That's not great. Um, e either way, whether it's Brian Hoyer or... Or back at practice, Mac Jones. Yeah, or Mac Jones. I mean, other people might not be back at practice. What is, what, what is going? Oh, is that you? The, are you the whale? Well, yeah, because I heard the same thing when he said you can just hear the whales, and I know you were saying whaling. <laughs> yes, but I, as in, I thought maybe you whaled like a whale. Well, that's that's for me to know and no one else to find out. That was the sound of Mac Jones coming off the field last week. Dude, the video of them carrying Mac Jones down the he stairs. He was screaming. That was a man in pain. Any changes to your the, the thoughts on all of the uh, Mac Jones-related content from this week? No. Based on him screaming coming off the field? No, because a, a lot of people 
would have just stayed on the field. But okay. Mac Jones got off yeah. All right. of mm -hmm. the field. A lot of people would have been, would have been yelling louder, I think. Yes, is what you of meant. course. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people yeah. wouldn't be practicing right now, but he is yeah. back in practice. Because they actually, all had the surgery. We have, right, we have actually seen uh, quarterbacks play through a high ankle sprain. They don't need it quite the same as others but their high ankle they don't need their high ankle well, as much they, right they don't they don't need it as much as a running back or wide receiver that just completely is um you know unplayable that being said you're going to have an injured mac jones or probably a brian hoyer in this game and that rules out all receiving options to me across the board Devonte parker i'm not chasing the big game without jacoby myers last week I mean, they're an NFL team. They're going to throw the ball. Someone will catch it, but I'm not. I'm not trying to predict who it's going to be or take the sub sixteen projected uh, in Green Bay. Line. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, Ramondre, you putting him in there as a flex? Yeah, I think he is a, a strong, a strong flex play. Same with Damian Harris. I I think you might be able to play both of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon, at home. Play him. The running defense for the Patriots don't care. Uh, is you don't care. All right, nope. so they're both in. Alan Lazard, Romeo Dobbs. This is now. This is a conversation because Alan Lazard is still recovering from the ankle injury. Has scored in both weeks, but Romeo Dobbs was the story of the last week. Twenty four percent of the targets came out of the gate just hot. I mean, on that first drive. Some in some massive production, like an entire day's worth of of fantasy production for Romeo Dobbs in that first drive. It's going to be very interesting to watch how what happens here with like is what's the status of Christian Watson? Christian Watson has been back at okay. practice. He's been practicing. So I based he'll on the, back the videos that I've seen, it looks like he's ready to go and he'll play, which definitely. Uh, takes a little bit off of Romeo Dobbs here. It this takes is a, the it, it, it the increases the risk factor for sure. Yeah, I I don't expect him to be the number one target necessarily in this game. Whereas if Christian Watson was out, I mean he played eighty nine percent of snaps last week. Romeo Dobbs did uh, was the clear number one. He was the first read. There were design plays for him. So there, you know it was it was really good for Dobbs. I think he could have another good week. Um, but Christian Watson being back probably limits the guaranteed upside. Robert Tunyon was Mike's start of the week. I am going to go as far as to guarantee a score in this game for Robert Tunyon. Okay. I'm putting it I'm putting it down. I, I love the pick, Mike. I think his breakout is coming. So if he's sitting there, if you're in the tight end wasteland and he's sitting there on the waiver wire, even if you have a David Njoku, even if you have an Irv Smith or anybody that you're going to you, you feel better starting this week for whatever reason, which you shouldn't because the – Patriots have given up like 16 points a game to tight ends. In my opinion, you pick up, pick up Bob. Yep, put right. Bob on your bench. We, yeah. have, we have a water bet with him, right? Who? What was that? Didn't we do something? Um. Who, yes. Who cares? We. Who cares? <laughs> I do. I just asked the question. Yeah. I mean, we do. Let's see. It's a. Uh, I'm only seeing DJ Moore versus the Dorch. Yeah, that's all I'm seeing too. Hmm. Like I feel that. like we made a a, a bet. Yeah, because right. you're anti Tunyon. Some I'm not anti Tunyon, but I thought you, you hate the Bob. You taking Tunyon over whoever the other player was, I thought was a little surprising. Probably in Joku, maybe. Oh, think, Gerald Everett. I think it was. Everett. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. yeah. There it was. It was. Yeah, there it was. Yeah, and that's crazy. Everett's great. That's not crazy. The who would you play, Mike? I Bobby in your in your start of the week or Gerald Everett this week. I would probably go with Gerald Everett. They're very, very I mean, they're like exact same team. Hey, Andy. No, they're, they're. You want a water bet this week, Gerald Everett? I thought we already Robert did this. Tunyon? Well, let's. Now it's official. Water bet. Bobby, Bobby scoring. I guarantee a touchdown. I, I that that bet was during the party room on Spotify Live. There ah. we go. The I like again. I, he's my start of the week. I like Bob Tunyon. Is he, I think he's a good play this week. The targets per route run are great. The question for for him is. If all of the the wide receivers are healthy and and going, then what does that do for Bob? That's, Bob that's is my going, hesitance. Bob's going to to own. Is this the, an okay. official name change for us? Is this Bob? I I like it. It's it's Big Bob, Bob Tunyon. Big Bob I Tunyon. Know. I just I find it to be a betrayal of the start of the week principles. Because Everett is not an auto start, and I feel like you're you're in that. Mm. I mean, you're in that range where, you know, he he feels like. He did two catches last week. Sounds like you should take his start of the week. 
You want to trade? I yeah, I wanted David and Joku. Let's trade. All okay. right. Perfect. This is the first start of the week right. trade in the history of the show. <laughs> my I've start, got Bob. Now? Yeah, you do. Heck my, yeah. My start of the week, David and Joku is going to crush this week. Oh, now you can now you don't have to side with Bob Tunyon. There you go. Now the real question is David and Joku or Jared Everett? <laughs> yes. What? Oh, David and Joku. All right, there you go. Real start of the week. <laughs> That's a good trade. Uh, I should have gone for like a third rounder in there too with Njoku. Um, all right, we're moving on. We're going to talk about the Denver Broncos taking on the Los An uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook line: Las Vegas minus two and a half at home. The over under is forty five and a half. The storyline for the Denver Broncos has been bad offense, great defense, fourth against opposing quarterbacks, third against running backs, first against wide receivers. How do those defensive rankings affect the potential to stream Derek Carr at home and then play Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams, and company? Uh, I would prefer not to stream Derek Carr in this matchup. Devontae Adams is every single week. Uh, Josh Jacobs is in that range of a running back where it's like, do you have uh, – so Ramondre Stevenson – or Josh Jacobs? Where would you guys go? I think in this matchup, I would prefer to have Ramondre. I'd prefer to have Devin Singletary. I would put Devin a ahead of both of those Rashad players. Rashad Penny against Detroit or <laughs> Josh Jacobs. Rashad Penny's a really fun play to me this week. But I that's agree. more. I feel like it's more GPP, like a, a tournament play. He could, he could have a monster performance this week. He could also have like, you know, six for nine. That's no, not very nice. No, it would not be. For those that don't play uh, like DraftKings and Daily Fantasy, do you do you mind summarizing what you mean when you refer to GPP? Yeah, so um, when uh, that's a big tournament play, so you've got to have someone that people aren't playing a lot of who really goes above expectation, and they have to have monster games. It's not a safe play; it's a risky, high upside, uh, volatile play to win in a tournament. Yeah, in a tournament, GPP guaranteed price pool. Uh, so, Waller, he's your tight end. You play him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, on the other side of the ball, Russell Wilson. Mike has gone out on a limb. Ooh, oh, iron pants indeed. <laughs> and uh, went with the limited Russell Wilson. This is the like, only quarterback in the entire NFL without a red zone touchdown. Here's the thing for the start of the week with Russ. Either it works out and we're like, great, Russell Wilson was a top 12 guy this week, or he's terrible. And we never need to speak of him again. The steel underpants. <laughs> Strap in. Uh, Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon. Unfortunately, these were guys who I think one touch uh, apart last week. So that that was the frustrating part with Javante. Um, you know, his fantasy points have gone down three weeks in a row, not up. He did have 15 attempts in back-to-back -back weeks. Yeah, He's the still looking good on the ground. It's just total opportunities you know, if Mike Boone, Mike Boone was Mike Boone one was of the, the problem, the alerts last week. Yeah, that was sucky. Like uh, Melvin Gordon is sucky. Don't don't bring <laughs> Mike Boone into this. Come on, let let Javante have those targets. That being said, even with that, while he had the lowest snap percentage of the season so far, he actually had the most opportunities he had of the season last week. Speaking of Javante, so I this matchup is great. I'm starting Javante without question i think everybody who has javante is they might be a little worried about it i'm saying don't be you should have a good game uh melvin gordon last week 18 touches uh hunter renfro not at practice again seems like he could miss another week due to the concussion do you which which puts matt collins you chase the dragon well i mean you don't you don't chase it but you're willing to like if you have to start another raider it's him the dorch or matt collins matt collins matt collins agreed yeah. Um, Cortland Sutton. Yep. Yep. The rest of the receivers and the tight ends. Nope. Sunday night football, the Chiefs 2-1 and one, taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 2-1. and one. This one should be fun. Tampa Bay one-point home favorites according to the DraftKings Sportsbook uh, number. The over-under is 46. This is a rematch. Super Bowl 55. 55! Tampa Bay has been held under 20 points, 20 or below, in all three games this year. Uh, Kansas City, the offense did not look good against Indianapolis last week. Mahomes only completing 57% of his passes, almost as, the, as if Tyreek Hill matters. I, mean, I think that's what stood out to me in this offense, is that Tyreek Hill matters. He's still got Travis Kelsey, who's incredible. But 
you know, Juju, MBS, uh, the non-existent Sky Moore, McCole Hardman, these are not weapons that, to me, have made enough plays to make Patrick Mahomes uh, upper echelon. No, I, I, I agree. They they really need Sky Moore to get up to speed faster and become a part of this offense because the other known commodity older veteran guys we know aren't good enough to take this offense to the elite, elite tier that it usually lives in. So I still would be stashing Sky Moore, uh, you know, in on my bench for the second half of the season, even though he has done relatively nothing. As far as the other options, I think last week was worse than nothing. Yeah, he, last he week fumbled. Was, yeah. That was why he fumbled on special teams, and then they're like, "Well, you're done." Um, I've been staring down that decision, and it, I, I chose like the Christian Watson, Alec Pierce. Um, some of the other rookies over Sky Moore because I feel like the pathway is so. I mean, what did he have? Like fourteen percent of snaps or something? It just it's frustrating because they need a playmaker, but he doesn't seem to have earned a role. No, absolutely. Yet, yet. Yeah, I would take the rookies who have opportunity over the rookies that don't. But I would take all of these, including Sky Moore as a rookie, over the ho hum average going to get me eight points on my bench veteran who has no upside and probably won't ever crack my starting lineup. So uh, that means we're not starting any of the wide receivers for Kansas City? I think you can start Juju. Um, I don't expect huge things from him, but he's been the target leader in the majority of games. And, uh, you know, it, he's a, a low-end flex, a wide receiver three type of option. Yeah, two of the three games over 20% of the targets. He's at uh, wide receiver 35 on the week, according to our consensus. So just on the outer edge of wide receiver three territory. It's playable. Clyde? Man. Stay there's I mean uh, these NBA jam rules right we don't like the numbers behind the scenes but right. you got to stay in the flames when you're on fire he's been a top <laughs> 20 back all three weeks because he's scoring touchdowns um, obviously there are concerns we have been trying to get everybody who has him to trade him capitalize on that value. Hopefully you did and you don't have to worry about it but in the meantime you get, you got to keep playing him on the other side Tom Brady. Uh, he's averaging 224 passing yards and one touchdown. The defense has been great. Uh, that's what makes me really nervous about Clyde, by the way. They're number one against opposing running backs, so it's like if he doesn't score, it could be a disaster as opposed to just well, neutral. And, I mean, Jarek McKinnon is out-snapping Clyde the last couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, so I'm I'm very tempted to sit Clyde myself. But uh, Leonard Fournette averaging 23 opportunities a game. I think it's a yes. matter of time before he has a big game. Yes, Mike Evans back from the suspension. Julio Jones could play. Chris Godwin, Chris Godwin could play. The, uh, he is a game time decision now. I think both of these guys are going to miss. Yeah, they're they're going to miss. That's the the positive news for Chris Godwin is we're actually now a game time decision. I, that's it's so frustrating for fantasy because the odds of him playing are are so low that he's just you can't move him in, into your IR and make a move, but. Look at the positive side. If he's game time this week, we probably see him next week. Tom uh, Brady or Aaron Rodgers at home against the Patriots? I, both teams, at, both players at home. But I, I think I'm going to go with the matchup here against Kansas City and hope that both teams can go back and forth scoring, so I will take Tom Brady by a slight edge. I don't expect huge things for him this week, but he is a great trade-for target. Uh, even if you're not going to start him this week, he's going to get these weapons back. When Julio is back and Godwin is back and Mike Evans is back after this week, he's got a stretch run of Atlanta, the Steelers, the Panthers, Baltimore. I mean, I, I do think that you're going to have a lot of fantasy goodness over the next month and a half out of Brady. It's probably not going to be this week. Though. Yeah. Out of curiosity, Brady or Zay Jones? <laughs> Story time. <laughs> I, don't I wasn't even... going to bring it up. We... It was brought up. <laughs> so. we, just have, we have a dynasty league. I've had Brady. Now, I have Josh Allen in that league, and Brady's an expiring asset, right? And so I'm out of wide receivers. I've got injuries all over the place, and I just say out, off the top of my head, I go, I need to trade Brady for just somebody I can start this week because I'm never going to play him. Yes. And so Mike's like, oh, come talk to me. And they, I didn't even realize I was playing Mike this week in dynasty. So that's that's important fact number one. Look at who you're trading with. Number two, <laughs> Mike and I never trade, by the way. And and number two, it's like I'm looking at his roster, and I'm like, well, you know, I guess I take Zay Jones to spot start this week. Then I so I send the offer, 
And then I realize I've got Matt Collins on my team, which, by the way, we, what are we talking about? Hunter Renfro might miss the game. Matt yep. Collins is a better start than Zay Jones, in my opinion. Or, or in, uh, same well, category. Same, same Especially tier. with Zay Jones, you know, not really practicing yesterday. So I realize, Mac, this is all very, very done way too yes. quickly. And I go, oh, my gosh, I got Matt Collins. Screw this trade. I go to retract the trade. Mike slams accept on it. <laughs> And then within moments <laughs> sends me the fact that Zay Jones is not oh, practicing. I didn't know that Zay Jones not practicing. That was just an I after sent, the fact. I sent that to Mike <laughs> because we were talking about Zay Jones for our own roster. And he goes, what? I just traded Zay Jones. Then he goes and gives you that info. It was great. So it was, uh, it, I think we have the video, Josh, uh, Papa Josh. We might need to pull that up. I hit the floor and cry. I had, there were some whales that you could hear. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of that. Um, the Rams on Monday Night Football take on the 49ers who are one and two. Here Rams are two and one. Another fun game here. The DraftKings Sportsbook line though, one and a half. 49ers at home favorites. Over unders 42 and a half. Uh, the the offensive side of the ball for Los Angeles, it has not found its groove or anything close to it right now. Uh, last week, Cooper Cup bottled up for the first time in a while in Arizona. Uh, Cam Akers got the majority of the offensive snaps. Looked better against Arizona. That's not hard to do, but, you know, Allen Robinson, not enough targets. You're seeing Ben Skoranek, and uh, I don't know if I said that right. Ben Skoranek? Yeah. yeah. And uh, Brandon Powell getting design touches. Uh, Daryl Horenderson. Oh, uh, not bad. Not start-worthy right now. Like, what, what are you doing with the offensive side of the ball? I haven't seen people excited with Matthew Stafford. So it's, far, I mean, you're excited. Look, Cooper Cup. Well, he he was held in check, sort of. He still he still scored a 20 yard rushing touchdown. Cooper Cup is in play every week, and then as to me, the, the only other Ram that I like am excited to play. It's Tyler Higby, who is like this unsung hero. I mean, he's in PPR. In, it's in all formats. He's doing great. 95 percent of the snaps, averaging eight targets. In our league, I looked it up. If he had just one touchdown, he would be the tight end three in our league. You know, that's, of course, giving him points that he hasn't scored, but the point is he's doing so much damage in receptions and yardage that once, or I should say if, that's not a, it's not a guarantee they happen, but if the tight ends come for Tyler Higby, he's going to be, uh, like, not just a, a, not just an option, but a good, strong option. Is that because the position. other tight ends are going to lift him up? They might on their shoulders when all these tight ends they, come for. They got to choose Tyler one. Higby. <laughs> I am. I'm pretty worried about this matchup in general for the Rams' offense to get in sync. The 49ers' defense is great. They are They're the best against tight ends. They're at home. I think they win this game. They are favored. Uh, yeah, I would make it an almost upset if it, but they're favored because Vegas knows what this defense is about. Almost going to win. That being I just said, think I, I, I only like Cooper Cup in this game. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, I like Higby. I, I, C Cup and Higby, I am happy with. Everyone else, I am pretty much looking a different direction. This is a divisional game, and the defense for the 49ers has been absolutely fantastic. That being said, Chicago. In the, in the monsoon. Yeah, in the monsoon. Seattle and the Denver hapless Broncos. Denver Broncos right now. So I, I'm not sure how good – like, they've been super good, but I'm not sure how much of that is them versus how much of that was their opponent. We'll find out this week against the Rams. Jeff Wilson, 20 and 15 opportunities in the two weeks since the injury to Elijah Mitchell. Jeff Wilson or Damian Pierce this week against the Chargers? Jeff Wilson. Uh, I'm going to take Damian Pierce in that one. I think I am as well. Uh, Jeff Wilson or Ezekiel Elliott against Washington? Ooh. Uh, that one's tough. I'm going to go Zeke. Yeah, I am too. Uh, but I will take Jeff Wilson over Brees. Okay. And the, I, will, I will take him over A.J. Dillon. Yes. The, the reason why I'm saying Jeff over like Damian Pierce, Damian Pierce can get game scripted out. Where like if Rex Burkett is still the third down running back, he's still the guy that when they're trailing, they're going to they're gonna put sexy Rexy on the field. Jeff Wilson cannot be game scripted out at, in terms of actually being on the field. They have nobody else. The George Kittle uh, debut last week, 91% yeah. of snaps. Mm -hmm. I, I'm happy there. It will come for him. Um, five targets. It was like 24 yards or something. It wasn't good. But Debo getting 13 opportunities a game, still been in double digits. Not the Debo of last year yet because the touchdowns haven't come. But, again, that's a player that I think we're all by low on. 
Yeah, we are. We are. And what what do you make of uh, eight targets back to back weeks for Brandon Ayuk? He had he had a score. He had like and it was like a a slant inside the five. This is this is a player that we should be starting in a lot of situations. The second half of last year, Brandon Ayuk was really solid. He was a common good play not not like he didn't have big wide receiver one finishes but he was like always a top 30 wide receiver he back to back eight targets with Jimmy Garoppolo right. and the situation is identical to the last half of last year where you were using Debo as more of the second running back because of running back injuries to your team you've got Kittle I think Brandon Ayuk is a fine fine play would you play him or Allen robinson in this game Allen yeah. robinson is brandon one of Ayuk. seven players with an end zone target every week yeah i, I would play brandon Ayuk over robinson the rankings the start sit tool all on the website the fantasy footballers.com couple of injury updates Kadarius tony wandell robinson did not practice on friday we don't expect them to play if you want to take a uh a shot in dfs which we're about to talk about you know david sales is three thousand dollars richie james four thousand that would be my pick so um both of them getting targets. And, uh, Mike, that poll you threw up, mm -hmm. Olave versus Mike Williams, 61% of the Foot Clan went with Mike Williams against Houston versus Olave against Minnesota. All right. You guys ready to move on? Ready to – I'm not. I'm not ready to move Hit on. Hit the button. Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. Well, every week, it's mano y mano y mano in the fantasy face-off on DraftKings, and the loser spins the wheel of shame. Uh, I took a poll of the Foot Clan, 100% said it was me, so unfortunately, I need to spin the wheel. Wheel of Shame. Is that because the people who saw the poll saw the score? Yes. It was the mm. score that really was my undoing. Yes. Uh, go ahead and uh, let's spin the wheel. And it looks like, oh, I got, um, oh, boy. Caves, Man, Caves. Oompa Loompa, oh, duck come face. On. Come on. Uh, duck face. Hippo. <laughs> oh, I, I hope I'm you're hungry. I'm excited to see what, is what the, the hippo, hippo is. What do I got to do here? <laughs> got to oh. put on the hippo mask. Hungry, hungry hippo. Um. All right, the mask is going on. This is not a. Oh, this is. <laughs> that looks almost like a knight. He looks like a a knight hippo. I I would or, make a hippo. or like a hippo is actively eating you. I'd make a hippo sound if I knew what a hippo sounded like. Is there I, anything like a whale? Because we can do that. I do know what a hippo taking a poop sounds like because I've seen that video. Yeah, so my sounds like a machine gun. Yes, it does. That's, that's what my roster did last week. So <laughs> I'll make um, a hippo turd. Oh. It's it's, kinda, it also is ironically it's a very hippo bonnet we talked about bonnets yes. and this is i mean you're basically wearing a bonnet <laughs> that just has a bottom lip i i'm gonna be honest this hippo mask and i you know i feel like i drew a pretty good draw this week because this is comfortable like in a cold oh, weather no, it's in a luxurious. cold in a cold weather climate i would put this on yeah. and wear it i knew we shouldn't have gotten the cashmere hippo oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are jumping into the fantasy face-off. Um, not great on the microphone, I'll be honest. I like the tag. Or was that his tooth? That's um, a tooth. I thought it That's was a tooth. <laughs> There's two. It yes. looks good. Looks good. All right, so my quarterback this week, I am going with. <laughs> you got to put the ears up, Andy. You got to get the. Do I, the ears need to come oh, up? Oh, yeah, yeah, much better. Okay. There. Look how happy that is. I didn't even fit is. in the frame. Um, I'm going Justin Herbert. 7,100 against Houston. Uh, I like the matchup. I like the guaranteed points in Justin Herbert. I know that there's problems with the pass catchers, but he is and the ribs. He's really good. Yeah, he is. And I like the. I, I just want to spend up more than that. Yeah, I didn't either, but I did it. Uh, I I'm know. Going with Josh Allen. Josh Allen, bro. High five. Right. Eighty four hundred. I didn't learn my lesson, this did is I? How we started last week. Yeah, uh, eighty four hundred. He's very expensive, but I I feel like if you don't have Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, or Jalen Hurts. You're not winning in a cash game right now. Mm. Yeah, well, we'll find mm. out about that. <laughs> uh, my running backs, uh, one very expensive, one bargain uh, that I was trying to save some cash money on. Saquon Barkley, 8000 against the Chicago Bears. Loved what I saw last week. Uh, and then I went with... Um, Which one? 
what did you which which Craig Reynolds? Oh, oh, oh you went I, way down. I actually okay. love that. I so because it's a full PPR league. I think Craig, Detroit running back. Yes, <laughs> Detroit running back Craig Reynolds. How how much was he? Forty seven hundred. No, that's that's great because I I think that the average person is going to be shocked how involved Craig Reynolds is, especially in the passing game. That's um, the that's the plan here. And by the way, Saquon's rush receiving line is at one thirteen this week. Neat. So who do you got at running back, Jason? At running back, I've got the starter for Craig Reynolds. I have Jamal Williams, and I how, how much is he? He was sixty one hundred, okay. so it's not a very very cheap option like my Khalil Herbert was at fifty seven hundred. I am going with the uh, backups who are elevated due to injury at running back. This who was week. your first RB? Oh, Jamal. Jamal Williams and Khalil Herbert. All, All right. right. Uh, so I split the difference with you guys. I have Saquon Barkley at 8,000 and Khalil Herbert at 5,700. Yep, makes sense. My wide receivers, I went with three PPR options that I felt very confident in. Hollywood Brown at 6,900 against Carolina. Hey! Nice. CD Lamb for 6,700 against Washington. And Amari Cooper for 6,300 against Atlanta. Nice. I, <laughs> it's nice okay. to see Amari Cooper get in here. I, I went with three PPR options as well, one of which is CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb, 6,700. He's a great play this week. Um, uh, I went with a guy who has been very off-brand for me, but as far as PPR, Deontay Johnson at 6,000 sure. feels like he should certainly do better than that in his matchup. And then I went Cortland Sutton uh. at 6,400. His... Uh, you know, DraftKings Sportsbook line of 65 and a half receiving yards has already gone up from there. That that was something I liked earlier in the week with the DFS show. And I can't wait to hear your final three because those must be the cheapest players in the land considering <laughs> you have a very expensive quarterback. And those all three of those wide receivers are very good as well. Uh, Mike, who's your three wideouts? So I got uh, A.J. Brown. From yes. the Philadelphia Eagles at 7,400 locked in, top five option. I also have Amari Cooper. The uh, against Atlanta, yeah, against Atlanta. I mean, sixty three hundred for a guy that's a wide receiver one right now. Uh, I will take that. And then I had to save some cash, so I'm hoping that Romeo Dobbs can continue his number one usage for the Green Bay Packers at forty five hundred. All right. Well, I'm putting you know my start of the week at tight end into my lineup. Bob Tunyon, Robert Tunyon for just thirty five hundred against New England. Went Devin Duvernay at 4,100 against Buffalo in that game that I think will be uh, explosive. And then I went with the Denver defense on the road, 2,700 okay. against the Las Vegas Raiders. Was that the Lost I think Vegas? I threw a Lost in there. <laughs> Definitely. That's but this fair is, because they are 0-3. It's the hippo mask. The Lost Vegas Raiders. Um, I have Romeo Dobbs in my flex, so uh, we'll cancel each other out there, Mike. I've got Mike's. Start of the week at tight end, David and Joku. Nice. And the <laughs> Titans defense uh, also on the road against Indianapolis. Only twenty five hundred. I think that the, Rabel figures things the out. Scratching, now. ladies and gentlemen, is it's the, the tooth. It's the hungry hippo. Uh, all right. I, I who is the, your defense? The, the Titans? Tennessee Titans against the Indianapolis Colts. That's okay. who I got as well. I feel like they're the the budget play this week at twenty five hundred. Uh, at flex. Stone Cold Minimum, fellas. David Sills, 3K. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Just give me something, Mr. Sills. And then my tight end position will be filled with hopefully a shiny turd. As I'm oh. going with I'm going TJ Hawkinson, last man standing against the Seattle Seahawks at 4,100. Right now, Hawkinson on DK Sportsbook sitting at plus 155 to score a touchdown. Better odds than DK Metcalf. All right, that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. That is going to do it. Make sure you join Mike the Fantasy Hitman right live on all streaming platforms. You can go to BallersLive.com, subscribe, click the bell. Sunday morning, it'll be fun. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.